Today, I will be ranking your NFL fan base. No, 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 no. There's five tiers. There's the best fans. There's great fans. There's okay fans. There are insufferable fans. Certainly not I. And there are teams that simply just, they don't have a fan base. You know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I'm just going to go in order of the teams that are listed here. I'm going to start with the New Orleans Saints. NOLA has an excellent fan base, but I'm not ready to put them in the best fans. I'm going to put them in great fans. Now, the reason I think a team would actually deserve the insufferable tier is the level of delusion. I think there is a direct correlation between your levels of delusion and how insufferable you are as a fan and... Perfect timing. Dallas Cowboys can go right in the insufferable tier. Every single season, I will watch the Dallas Cowboys put up 45 unanswered points on an absolute poverty Washington Commanders team, and I will proudly see every tweet, every Instagram post, and every social media blown up with how Dak Prescott is undoubtedly winning MVP and going to the Super Bowl. And every single playoff run, I watch the Dallas Cowboys absolutely choke to an inferior team. Now, obviously, if they lost, they're not the inferior team, but on paper, they are consistently losing to inferior teams. And still, the fan base will always believe they're going to the Super Bowl. You almost have to give them credit. Like, if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, I respect your positive attitude. Some people call that delusion, though, and I'm putting Cowboys fans in insufferable. Just to be clear, I've been caught in the Dallas Cowboys cycle myself. Now, to contrast that, I think NOLA fans are very realistic about where their team is headed. I'm sure there were a few Saints fans who were delusional enough to believe that Derek Carr was actually going to take them to the promised land. But in general, I think a lot of Saints fans just wanted Jameis Winston to come in and chuck four touchdowns, 400 yards, and four interceptions. I don't think there was too much delusion there. I think the fans, uh, they understand what's going on with the team and they support regardless. And that's what makes for a great fit. Kevin Durant, half a point. Can he pull it off? Yeah, your ears perked up, didn't they? My brand new sponsor, Underdog Fantasy, is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Whether that's football, basketball, baseball, esports, whatever. They've got it. For the next few days, there's a massive offer for new users. You have the option to pair any of your picks with Kevin Durant to score more than half a point. This is the easiest way to make money on Underdog, and my promo code MMG will double your first deposit up to $100. So to play, you gotta select at least two picks from two separate teams. And you can choose up to five to complete your entry. Also, Underdog is going to be airdropping $1 million during the big tourney, and you could be a part of it. If you're already signed up, you're good to go. If not, make sure to download the app. There's a link in the top of the description. Use that promo code MMG, and you're good to go. Just make sure you do it before the semifinals to be eligible. It's a million bucks, you just gotta sign up. I believe in you. And importantly, Underdog's Pick'em is available in every state you see on screen, including Canada, including California, including Texas. Promo code MMG. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video. Miami Dolphins. I'm gonna put Miami Dolphins in okay fans. Miami and Los Angeles have their own unique reasons that I'm not a big fan of their fan base, and it really just has to do with location. There is so much money in Miami and Los Angeles that half of the fans in in the stadium at games wearing the gear are just rich people who want to attend something. They just want to be there. Dude, that Los Angeles Super Bowl, I don't think there was a single person with even a, a modicum of ball knowledge in the entire stadium. You trying to tell me that Dua Lipa has ball knowledge? You're telling me Dua Lipa understands the nuances of a nickel defense. Now, this is unfair to diehard Miami Dolphins fans, and I get it, but I've been to Hard Rock Stadium. I have never witnessed so many people who have no clue what's going on. It was actually frustrating. I'm gonna put them in okay fans because too many rich people go to the games that don't know what's going on just because they want to be there. Here's a great contrast. Baltimore, great fans. I think there is something to be said about areas that don't have great weather. They have outdoor stadiums, and people still show out and love their team. Baltimore is not known for it's great weather. It's not an excellent stadium by any means, and getting there isn't super easy either, but Ravens Flock still comes out in full force. There's an insanely good energy in that stadium, and I think that's because this organization has been ran so well over the last 25 years. I think that's cultivated a really good fan base. You don't see celebrities randomly. I mean, I'm sure you see some, but like a lot of the fans in the Baltimore stadium actually give a shit about Ravens football. So I I'm putting Baltimore in great fans. I almost might put them in, in the best tier, but I'm gonna 
to leave this this way and, and I'll revise if I need to. Cincinnati's the exact same way. I think Bengals fans are awesome. I think the sign of a really good fan base is when your star quarterback goes down and you fully rally behind the backup. And honestly, like Jake Browning really did play well this year, but I love to see the response of him coming in and playing okay. I'm sure a lot of Cincinnati fans wanted to go for a playoff push this year. Obviously pretty hard without Joe Burrow, but I think Cincinnati's got some awesome fans. All right, Denver Broncos, it, very soon here, I think Denver Broncos fans will be teetering on insufferable. That is simply because of how big of a rut the organization is in right now. I think Denver Broncos get okay. How quickly they turned on Russell Wilson was insane. How much did he deserve it? Probably a lot. How quickly they've turned on their organization and franchise and ownership. Do they deserve it? Definitely. It's not like Broncos fans deserve great fans. You're not rallying, okay? But I think the degree to which you've taken this horrible scenario is commendable. But wow, you are gonna hear some bitching Broncos fans over the next four years and it's gonna be tough. And it's not your fault, Broncos fans. It's not your fault at all. You're getting okay fans for now. New York Giants fans, absolutely insufferable. I do not know what they have in the water in the NFC East, but they are poisoning that shit with delusion. Oh my God, you thought Tommy DeVito was taking you to the playoffs? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> that was a very impressive Brian Dabble season when Danny Dimes was going for the playoff run and, and they beat the Vikings. That team was never going all the way. The Giants just lost Saquon and got Devin Singletary. And then they traded a second round pick and a fifth for Brian Burns. And Giants fans are, are so delusional. It's crazy. It's like it's an NFC East thing. It's an NFC East thing. It's gotta be. Minnesota Vikings are getting great fans for the same reason that Cincinnati did. Number one, I already think Minnesota fans are just awesome football fans. People in Minnesota love, love, love football. Kirk Cousins goes down. You cycle through so many quarterbacks, but they showed so much love to all the guys that played. You know, we had the little Josh Dobbs saga for like one or two games. It was awesome. And then he played like shit. Regardless, Minnesota just lost Kirk Cousins. Who knows who they're gonna get? They might already as you're watching this, man, already have a replacement. I think Minnesota's got some awesome football fans. Uh, Rams are gonna get okay for the same reason as Miami. It really doesn't feel like there's a strong fan cohesion here, but it's not fair to call them insufferable, and it's definitely not fair to call them non-existent because they won a Super Bowl. This is gonna naturally happen when you relocate cities. They're now in Los Angeles, which I really don't see as this crazy football market. I feel like Los Angeles is very basketball oriented. I don't know, but like, they're not great fans either. You guys literally relocated Los Angeles and then you get gifted a Super Bowl in SoFi. Maybe gifted isn't the right word. Obviously they won the games and they needed to win and then they won the Super Bowl, but I can't really name that many Rams fans in general. If they didn't win that Super Bowl, I'm teetering on putting them here. It's just because they relocated though. Tampa Bay, I am putting in the great tier. You could have so easily, as a Buccaneers fan, completely just bitched forever about your quarterback situation. Because you went from Jameis Winston, who like, Jameis Winston is a ball hucker. Jameis Winston does not give a shit who's down there. He's fucking throwing that ball. That was reason enough to really be a shitty fan. And then you pick up Tom Brady, you win a Super Bowl. That's pretty nice. Congratulations. But when Tom Brady leaves, you're back to square one. You get Baker Mayfield, who a lot of teams have simply discarded from their memory. And then he plays amazing. You go to the playoffs, you beat the Philadelphia Eagles, get a little redemption there. I love Tampa Bay fans. There's a lot of loyalty there too. I love to see a guy like Mike Evans so consistently play great football and stay on the same organization. They don't get best fans, but they're great fans. Fully unbiased, I think it's very obvious that Detroit Lions fans are the absolute best fans. <laughs> how that's incredibly offensive. Yes, I do, that's why I said it. We have been through hell and back. We still love our team. We go all the way to the NFC Championship. We lose a bummer game to Niners, but guess what? Guess what? All the casuals on planet Earth, all the non-Lions fans think that Dan Campbell made a bad decision in that game, or many bad decisions not kicking the field goal. But Lions fans believe, potentially delusionally, that Dan Campbell's decisions were good decisions. Am I delusional? You are correct, sir. Am I delusional like a Cowboys fan? No. Detroit fans are the best fans. We have Ford Field Rocky. Who wants to live in Detroit? Fucking nobody wants to live in Detroit. We still pull up to Ford Field when it's zero degrees and watch our team win a playoff game for the first time in 66 years. Ligma. We're getting S tier fans. <laughs> you can't keep getting away with this. Bears fans are getting okay. Normally, I'd put Bears fans as great fans, but I think right now there's too much of a divide amongst Bears fans. Are you drafting Caleb Williams number one, or are you trading the first round pick for capital? It feels like the fans themselves cannot decide. I think that is a bad sign. 
San Fran 49ers get great fans from me. Number one, my experience at the game in the NFC Championship was excellent. Everyone there was very non-hostile. They were very rooting on their team, but they weren't hostile. Sadly, there are, I don't know, a small but very loud minority of people at football games who are the fucking worst. I'm sure if you've gone to football games, you've experienced this. There's like drunk assholes or just people who just want to start problems. And I've been to so many football games, I've seen it so much. San Fran, none, never. I went to two San Fran games and I never once was actually heckled. I'd get people like joking around, but nobody was being a true asshole. I think that's a very good sign of a good fan base. Now, granted, I wanna say San Fran has had just so much success over the last, actually probably the entirety of their franchise, that there's not exactly a lot to complain about. You have so many titles. You have so much year-over-year -year success. You're kind of spoon-fed. You know, you're like a privileged white guy being nice to, you know. Black. My bad. My bad. You get what I'm saying, though. Oh my gosh. I gotta edit that out. Man! Philadelphia, oh my God, it really is the NFC East. It really is the NFC East. Check him out, y'all. He dick ride, look. Pray to God that you never go to a Philadelphia game as a non-Philadelphia Eagle fan. Seriously. The most hostile, heckling environment ever. I get it. You like your team. You want your team to win. It doesn't matter to Philadelphia fans if Philadelphia is winning. That's what's crazy to me. If I'm at Ford Field and the Lions are winning 30 to zero, I will just sit there and chop it up with whoever is standing next to me. If it's a close game, yeah, I'm not gonna have a casual conversation with like the Vikings fan sitting next to me. But if it's three to zero or the other way around, if we're getting fucking blown out, I might as well be nice to the guy next to me. It's not like I play for the team. Philadelphia Eagles fans will have you convinced that they actually play for the team. They'll look you dead in your face and say, we just fuck you. What do you mean we, bro? Saquon Barkley just ran for 185 yards, three touchdowns. You are five beers deep. You didn't do a damn thing. But like, okay. And I want to be clear because I do sound like I'm being a hater. If you are a fan of the team, like if you're a Dallas fan or a Philadelphia, fan that just means you're really passionate and you absolutely love your team and i do love that that's so good for the sport but i am never going to philadelphia stadium no soft Raiders fans are okay. Raiders fans to me are teetering on um, insufferable. But honestly, like Raiders fans have, have seen so much pain over the last five years that I think they've calmed down. They're like a battered widow. They're wondering when their husband will return from war. And years and years go by and the husband does not return from war. I'm sorry, Raiders fans. Is this nigga serious? All right, this best tier is looking a little thin. So I need to add two teams to it right now. Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs. You're gonna be really mad at me about Kansas City Chiefs. Buffalo Bills, this is a crowd pleaser. Everybody knows Bills fans are S tier. They pull up to that stadium. Rain, shine, snow, sleet, hail. They don't give a shit. Bills Mafia. If you WWE flaming slam a table for a week two regular season game, you deserve absolute S tier. I don't even think Bills fans care. I think these guys just pull up to like smash tables and get drunk and I don't even think they know who's on the roster. You have to respect that. All right, now Kansas City. Let's talk about it because you're pissed. You're thinking of Taylor Swift fans and I get it. I'm excluding them from this argument, okay? I'm fully excluding Taylor Swift's fans from this argument because they don't count as Kansas City Chiefs fans to me. They're just bandwagons. Kansas City Chiefs fans are as diehard, if not more diehard than Bills fans. Every single NFL quarterback almost unanimously agrees that the loudest stadium to play in, the most difficult to get your play calls off in, is Arrowhead because they are so loud. And the thing is, like, this is a serious impact. If the fan base isn't loud and just isn't into it that much, it is such a big difference to a loud stadium. You guys know this. We're just talking about home and away team advantages. But your home team advantage as a Kansas City fan is so severe compared to, like, let's compare that to the Rams. You go play in SoFi, nobody gives a shit. Go to a game in SoFi sometime in your life. I've been to, like, five or six games in SoFi, Chargers and Rams. Everybody's just, like, talking and just having a good time and just eating their hot dogs and shit. Oftentimes at a Rams game in SoFi, there are more of the opposing team than Rams fans. Sorry to catch a stray Rams fans. I know you relocated, but when I went to like Chargers Lions, which was a barn buster, 41-38, it was a crazy good game. It was like half Lions, half Chargers. You would have no clue who was the home team. You'd think it was a neutral site. So I think the degree to which Chiefs fans roll out in absolute packs and are loud as shit and really impact a game, it's almost, it's not, but it's almost soccer football esque. I don't know if you guys have ever been to like a European football soccer game. Holy shit. Those guys are psychopaths.
Guys, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm putting Packers up there. I actually am. The Packers have such an iconic franchise, an iconic stadium, an iconic fan base. You've got the Lambo leap. And one thing I will give Packers fans so much credit for, Aaron Rodgers leaves and they lose literally no hope at all. Dude, the amount of franchises who will cope see them mauled on the internet when their franchise quarterback leaves. These guys were like, yeah, sorry, but Jordan Love's actually a god and he's actually just gonna step right in and have immediate success. And I was like, yeah, sure, bud. Welcome to uh, the Dallas Cowboys club where everyone's delusional. Nope, he actually did that shit. He actually immediately had success. Let's talk about the talent. People always wanna bitch about what wide receivers you're throwing to. Like, oh, he's throwing to Walmart wide receivers. That's his excuse. Who was Jordan Love really throwing to? Dontavious Wicks, Jaden Reed, Eskimo brother. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. You get my point. I think that's an excellent fan base. They showed up, they showed out, and they were right. Commanders fans, I'm giving you okay. I almost would give you great fans because wow, you have been through so much and you're still kind of there. But um, I think there is an obvious sentiment amongst Commanders fans that it's just a shit show. It's a flaming hot pile of shit. You don't have enough uh, delusional positivity, but I'm giving Commanders fans okay. Okay. Arizona's getting my first non-existent. I'm sure at some point, Arizona fans were very existent, but living in Arizona, it kind of just like feels like everybody collectively is either a Larry Fitzgerald fan or just does not care. Which I think is honestly interesting. I don't think Kyler Murray has been given a full chance yet. Maybe I'm delusional. I think Kyler Murray's great and I really want him to ball out. I'm excited to see it. But the one Cardinals game I went to was a very barren stadium. No one seemed to care. And um, it was either let's talk about, literally, let's talk about Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald or not, not talk about this team. I get it. Morale is very low, but um, I don't know if non-existent is really the right term for Cardinals fans here. But Cardinals fans, Fans are not okay. I think they're below okay right now, but they're not insufferable. You don't you don't really hear of annoying Cardinals fans. No one's delusionally believing that the Arizona Cardinals are going to the Super Bowl. All right, as long as we're on the non-existent train, Chargers fans. This like wow. I have never seen a true home stadium 3,000 miles away from the away team. I'm talking about the Lions Chargers game. Be so neutral. It was so neutral. There might have been more Lions fans in that stadium than Chargers fans. You guys remember when they had that Asian chick like on Instagrams, this Chargers fan, and everyone's calling her an industry plant. It's because it's so unbelievable that there would be a diehard Chargers fan, right? I just don't get it. Chargers get non-existent. You know what's funny? The Texans really almost could get non-existent, but this was too good of a year for Texans fans. And they believed in their guy. They believed in their coach. They believed in their rookies. I'm not gonna jump Texans fans all the way to great fans yet, because that's a little early. This is like the first good year of seeing really positive use in Texans fans. You're getting okay, but let's, let's temper expectations. Browns fans, great fans. Dog pound. A little delusional, but in the good way, not the Dak Prescott way. Awesome to watch Joe Flacco this year. And even Browns fans are kind of like shitting on Deshaun Watson. And I think because of, you know, all of his sexual misdoing accusations, I actually think this is a sign of a great fan base. Okay, the Patriots in their heyday, like Patriots fans were so insufferable. I almost want to put them insufferable. When Tom Brady's dynasty was here, pretty sure Tom Brady could have gotten accused of everything anything. And the most delusional Patriots fans would have gaslit you into believing that what Tom Brady did was actually a good thing. Like that's how insufferable they were. In fairness, I think the Patriots fans since Tom Brady has left have come back down to a, a likable fan base that is also due in fact to the part that they suck. Like they actually suck. I'm still putting Patriots in insufferable, but you're one year of good behavior away from okay fans. Also, it's the first non-NFC East team in insufferable. So it's in the water in Foxborough too. I'm giving Panthers fans okay fans. How quickly Panthers fans are shitting on Bryce Young is pissing me off. Many, many, many quarterbacks thrust into that horrible 1-1 one, one position, round one pick one, have struggled in the first year. You're supposed to. In fact, what happened with CJ Stroud is the anomaly. It's not the standard. People think they're just going to draft a good quarterback and he's going to come out here and do what CJ Stroud did. If you think that, you are wrong. What CJ Stroud did was like record-breaking insane. It was probably the single best rookie quarterback performance ever. It was probably the best. I, I think. I would actually argue that it is. So for Panthers fans to turn on Bryce Young so fast. Actually, okay, if I'm going to say that, I'm putting Texans fans in great fans. Congratulations, Houston. Panthers fans, the world is not ending. Bryce Young has time to develop. He was picked round one, pick one for a reason. Give the guy a second, all right? There's a reason you had the first pick. You suck dick.
Dude, I can't find Jaguars fans to save my life. I'm putting Jaguars fans in non-existent. Is it just because it's a new franchise or what? I don't know. I think Trevor Lawrence is doing a great job for them because he's such a recognizable face. But I just, just don't see Jaguars fans. I'm putting them in non-existent. Where do we put Pittsburgh? Are Pittsburgh fans delusional because they actually think that they're going to make a playoff push and that makes them insufferable? Or are Pittsburgh fans diehard even when their team literally just keeps going 9-8, and eight, which is like the actually the worst way to run a franchise? Uh, I'm giving Pittsburgh great fans. I think that one might get me in a little bit of trouble, but Pittsburgh has like a long lineage of being a successful team. There are many, many diehard Steelers fans of so many years. Obviously, like, if you're Pittsburgh, you have such an advantage on a team like Jacksonville, who's a new franchise, but I don't know. Pittsburgh fans piss me off sometimes. Going 9-8 and eight is not an accomplishment. You don't want to be... Whatever. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, though. I am a... I don't know why I'm holding this. This is the lens cap. I am a hater. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers hater. Atlanta Falcons! Atlanta Falcons, you're getting okay fans. You've been through a lot of pain, some very traumatic experiences. I'm not going to bring them up. You know what I'm talking about. This is a huge year for you guys. You just got Perk Duggins. You got a new scheme that's not Arthur Smith, and you can actually use Kyle Pitts and Bijan Robinson. You guys have drafted excellent players, and now you have a quarterback who can actually use them, and I'd like to see how you guys handle it. I'm giving you okay for right now. Seattle has such an amazing fan base. This does come with having such a likable team, and Pete Carroll, Marshawn Lynch, Richard Sherman, Lee of boom. You got a lot of reason to be excited over the years, but like how they rallied behind Geno Smith. Awesome. I think Seattle, actually, Seattle gets to be in the top tier. I think Seattle is such a sick fan base. Seattle is not a great place to be playing football, by the way. Seattle is dark and cloudy and rainy and shitty all the time. You have a lot of reasons to be depressed and annoyed, kind of like Commanders fans, but you're not, and I respect it. You certainly have the bias of having very good tenured. Absolutely love Seattle fans. Jets fans, where are we putting Jets fans? Jets fans, you get okay. I wanna see how you react to actually having a full season of Aaron Rodgers, and then we'll talk. Because I understand the pain of, of Zach Wilson. I get it. Titans fans are great fans. Titans fans have a lot that they can bitch about, and you just don't see it. Titans fans just love to watch Derrick Henry run for a thousand plus yards and call it a day. I like Titans fans. It's a good spot for football. I'm gonna give Colts great fans as well. It, there's a really good way to tell if you've got okay fans, insufferable fans, or great fans. Because when Gardner Minshew has to go in there at quarterback, you have two options. You could bitch endlessly about how you don't have your starting quarterback and Gardner Minshew's a backup, or you can make a bunch of jokes about how he's got a cool mustache and just lose games happily. And that's what Indianapolis did. And honestly, he actually played pretty good. I like Gardner Minshew. This is my official NFL fan base tier list. The best fan bases in the NFL to me are the Lions, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Packers, and the Seahawks. Next is the great tier after that is okay fans. There's four insufferable fan bases. That's Cowboys, Giants, Eagles, and Patriots fans. And then there are three teams that it just doesn't feel like they have any fans at all right now. And that's the Arizona Cardinals, the Chargers, and the Jaguars. If you disagree, you are wrong. My algorithmically coded bot actually made this tier list. Statistically, 50% of the time, it works every single time. So argue with a wall. Don't argue with me because that's just the facts. I love you boys. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.